Vermonte Bryant with Politics 963, your location for all things political, whether it's local or national, we've got you covered. Today, our focus is the life and legacy of civil rights icon Dick Gregory. We talk about today his mission, how laughter turned into social activism. Joining us this afternoon is Ayanna Gregory, an artist and the daughter of Dick Gregory. Thank you so much for joining us. Many of us know about Dick Gregory. We know about his comedy. We know about his social activism. You know him as a father. Tell us about Dick Gregory as a father and his impact on your life. Mm. Well, one of the things that I say about my dad is that even though, when, even though he wasn't home a lot, even when he wasn't home, he was home because he, he always had this impenetrable effect on our daily lives um, in some ways that we didn't like at that time. So, you know, the world knows him, among other things, as a health guru. So you can imagine what it was like for 10 black children in the early 1970s to be forced to become overnight vegetarians when the rest of the world at that time hadn't caught up to his wisdom around holistic health. So, you know, for us, we're like, this man is crazy. And there was no transition. It was one day meat was in the house, the next day it wasn't. One day television was in the house, the next day it wasn't. So I can just tell you about the things that we weren't able to do in my house. So there was no television. There was no eating and drinking at the same time. No meat, no dairy products, no sugar, no white bread. Um, Sometimes I thought, anything you thought you wanted to do as a kid, when he was home, we weren't allowed to do it. So you're a healthy person. Uh, yeah. If you still follow that mandate. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting because you said no television. No. But this is a man, many remember him, stand-up comedian, yeah. Jack Parr show in the 1960s, Playboy Club, uh, all over the place. He was a man in many ways that was central to the media, yet you could not see him when he was marching with Martin Luther King, you could not watch any of those programs? Well, that was a, that was a different time. So mm -hmm. during that time, that was in the 60s, so the transition hadn't happened yet. So when you look at the Dick Gregory, um, the comedian and the young Dick Gregory that just began to move into the civil rights movement when Medgar asked him to come down to Mississippi, we're talking about the late 50s and the early 60s. And then as we move into the, the full 60s, you're, you're still talking about um, he hadn't really moved into the holistic health piece. And so now, you, now you're getting into the early 70s, which is when we moved from the south side of Chicago to Plymouth, Massachusetts. We moved on 300 acres of land. We moved uh, on, a, I always laugh and say, we moved on a great big lake so that all of us non-swimming black children uh, could drown. We are like, Daddy, what were you thinking? You know, they say my mom cried when we arrived, because she's like, there were no transitions. Like, he was literally moving at the speed of light. So much information was being downloaded that he had to move on. So it didn't have to make sense to us. It was going down. It was happening. You know, I mentioned him, uh, and I called him a chameleon. And mm -hmm. I think that's how you're describing him right now in so many ways. Up until the last week of his life, mm -hmm. he was talking about what was happening in Charlottesville. Yeah. Um, What's your sense of if your dad was still here, what would he be talking about? What, what, what things would be at the center sort of of his being? I really feel like, you know, one of the things that my dad always says is shut up and listen. And oftentimes when he's doing interviews and people are asking him questions and he's getting, he's getting you know, aggravated and upset with them and he say, shut up and listen, right? Oftentimes they think he's only talking about shut up and listen to me. But what he was also talking about was listen. We're so smart with our smartphones. We know everything with our tweets and Instagrams and you know, all the, the, the world of, of digital media and um, the world where everything is, any information we, we want, we can get, have it in our living room in an instant. And he's saying beyond, above and beyond all of that, there is a God force that lives inside of you that no amount of external information can equal. And so when he would say, shut up and listen, he was saying, keep your ear to the ground. He would say, listen to the internal rhythm inside of you. There's a voice 
underneath the voice, underneath the voice, that's giving you the blueprint for everything you need. That's what he would say. And that's a long lasting message, obviously, that will go uh, beyond his life. Iana Gregory, thank you so much for joining us and thank sharing you. uh, your insights about your father. That's Politics 963. I'm Bramante Bryant. Make sure to stay connected with us on all things political on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook at Politics 963 and use the hashtag Stay Woke.